Okay, so I'm going to be doing a quick Nova the Squirrel speedrun tutorial here. Uh, most of the run is uh, quite self-explanatory. You could just uh, watch one of the runs and copy what's happening there. So I don't have anything too involved planned for this. I'm going to be playing through the game as I usually practice it with save states. And I'm going to be explaining anything that I come across that might not be completely obvious or uh, where there might be alternative strats if you want to do something easier or there's something really stupid that I'm not going for. So yeah, let's get started with that. And uh, for obvious starters, you're gonna erase the save file before every attempt. Set uh, The only thing you want to change in the options is accelerating too fast. I guess double tap to run could in theory be useful, but I'm just messing with that. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna talk too much about uh, movement through the stages. In World 1 especially, you just want to avoid uh, slowing down and it doesn't really matter how your movement is exactly beyond that. Uh, one little detail here is that uh, the springs, they bounce you from the position that you hit them in instead of sending you to a set height. You might notice the difference here when I'm either jumping on it or walking to it. So here you wanna optimally hit the top left corner of it. Then this platform, uh, where you can hold down to drop down, you can buffer it. So as I just showed you, you can just through. Uh, indoors and uh, any other screen dresses, you retain your momentum through them. So you want to hit them without stopping. And over there I ran through the enemy because there's a health drop right away again. And in most of the stages you can just ignore your health. There are a lot of health pickups and also just so long iframes that a lot of the time the stages are just over before it matters. But uh, I'm gonna take note in whichever stages it does matter, such as 1, 2 here. Where... Um, okay. So we're gonna be taking first damage here. With, you know, let's us go through these enemies with high frames. Then, uh, well, I'll let this enemy won't cycle walk past me, but normally you run into it here. So you want to stun this enemy to walk past it with, without taking damage. There's a backup health later on in the stage, uh, which doesn't cost a whole lot of time. So if you want to do safe threats, you can just always go for it, in which case you can ignore this one. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm, I messed up that transition there, and I also forgot to take my save states. But uh, you need to jump there uh, before actually getting to the, like while, while the loading screen is still on so that you hit this one and get on top of these. And the water bottle thr thrower there, uh, the cycle is essentially random. So if you take a hit from there, then actually, uh, let's back up again. So if you did take a health from damage from there, you would want to pick up this health here and get fast. And, uh, where was I? So if you're on two health here, you can ignore this enemy and just run to the end. If you're on one, then, uh, you can just gamble here. Like, you saw I could pass it, but, uh, I'm not sure if this getting past this enemy is random or just super precise, but you can't expect to get it every time. So if you're about to head here at one, you can take the backup health before, or you can just run for it and possibly die here. In which case, if you do, the checkpoint is here, right before it, and uh, dying costs very little time, so... Yeah. Uh, one tree. Health is usually not relevant, but it could be. Uh, did I remember to take a save state here? Well, it doesn't matter, because... We don't have any items we need to keep track of. Uh... Right, so... Uh, damn it. Okay, I shouldn't... Um, really, I didn't really need to load there, but uh, there's a minor movement optimization. You wanna jump from the end of this platform here to prevent bonking from the wall, into the wall there. Jump from the beginning of that block there to safely get over the water bottle guy. And, uh, yeah, move over here. Uh, if you're on low health, you can stop here to uh, stun that bird, or you you can take this save no, checkpoint for backup. Okay, you can't reach to the top from jumping here, but you can reach a 
checkpoint from boredom. Uh, yeah, this is where we first pick up burgers. Uh, the fast way to grab that is uh, just like that, you get it in the air. Uh, but then you can also just do two jumps there. It's uh, not that hard once you get used to the timings, but uh, they're, they're kind of unintuitive, so uh, take it as you will. So here's one little detail that I never fully worked out. When you're fully off screen like this, when you walk off, you can drop at two different heights. So right now I got the higher one, which means I am getting on top of this walk here. But sometimes you get a lower one like that, in which case you drop and right there it looked like it was because I just didn't jump high enough, but then again the second time I did get a, get a higher drop and I just don't know what does it exactly. It does seem consistent. Uh, in most of the stages where this used to be an issue for me, it's kind of resolved itself. In this case, uh, anyway, yeah, you want to jump in the end, make a little hop there, which uh, both gives you a tiny movement optimization in clearing, getting your movement speed going before the block there, but uh, also it ensures you don't get bong, don't drop in here. Which, if it does happen, you need to watch out for this flame guy here, because you're likely on one health here, and uh, you need to get there without touching him. Then, uh, when you do jump from here, you can jump while you're on the uh, off-screen, so you need to use it, make use of coyote time. I think this game has just massive coyote time. Uh, yeah, when I try to do it, make it extremely obvious, I tend to make it more too much, but hopefully over here you can see that. I'm getting a lot of jumps while already falling. And since this is NES and not one of those fancy modern platformers, uh, you don't the game doesn't roll back or anything, you just get to jump later. But uh, yeah, when you're jumping on from the ceiling like that, you need to jump during the quality time like that. If you try to jump earlier, you just don't get it. Uh, unless you didn't fully enter the wall, there's also like this level, where you're half inside the wall, from here you can jump. But, uh... Actually, wait. Yeah, so you can jump, but you bonk the ceiling, I guess. I have actually thought about that consciously a whole lot. But... Yeah, whatever. So this is the first stage that we start on burgers. For a tiny movement optimization, you can hold down, down right and B as you enter the stage, which gives you this burger to run on top of. It's uh, I haven't measured it exactly, but basically you get the burger speed added to your run speed and you get a few pixels of run, or a few fa frames of running like that, giving you extra movement speed and uh, it's a tiny frame saver. You don't want to, kind of don't want to do it all the time, because uh, it yeah, so again, back to basic mechanics, you get uh, one of these air burgers. And then you can shoot these freely, except that uh, in the beginning of the explosion they are prevented, which will come up later. But uh, the down B burger, which immediately places you on top of one, you need to touch the ground to reset it. So if you do these jumps carelessly, or then you might just find yourself falling into a pit and you want to just be deliberate where you do it. It's uh, yeah. If you're just starting out, you don't need to learn consistent movement for all the stages. You can get through most of them just winging it, but uh, you will occasionally die because of that. So, uh, especially in places where you find it happening more often, you want to start getting your movement consistent. Uh, here we're gonna be taking a bunch of damage, which uh, okay, let me fix that. Uh, yeah, so this spring here, it's uh, if you just run to, if you hit it from the top, you can get to the top, but if you hit it from the bottom, uh, too, too low, then you won't reach the top. So what I do here is uh, I always burger at the top here to make sure. And, uh, yeah, here you just hold right until this bit where you need to place a burger, like that. 
to make true. Make true. Uh, some of the movement optimization here I'm doing here is to collect those bags. You will do one shopping trip in the middle of world three and uh, getting the minimum required for the run is not super tight so you shouldn't worry about it too much but uh, getting a backup burger there is nice and that one does require being more diligent with those pickups so it's nice to get as much as you can but just uh, yeah you shouldn't compromise with it uh yeah that's the first ceiling clip and yeah it's as simple as it looks like you just uh get near the ceiling and then do the burger there's really not much more to it uh this water uh moving the water is slow so once you get to a posi the position you wanna ride the burger here for a little speed boost why am i not getting it now and uh wait, what did i I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong here. I have this game too much on muscle memory, so I can't do things. When I start thinking about things consciously, it's too much. Uh, yeah, so here's one stage where you don't want to start with the burger, because you need another one meter from the jump to reach here. So that's gonna be a thing. If you're not sure that the stage you're entering, done allows you to do the immediate burger, then don't go for it. Uh, so this stage, there were a couple of moments there, which are kind of like, what? That's not how I'm supposed to do this. embarrassing well okay fine you can look up what I normally do there from my other runs I'm just overthinking things and <laughs> muscle memory oh my god yeah so here Seven. This is uh, a stage where health shouldn't be an issue, but it's tight. So in this first section, I don't really care which enemies I run through. Again, I kind of forget the specifics since it's been ages since I routed this, but basically I concluded that in that section you will take two damage. And uh, the enemies that are hard to ignore are in such places that you basically just can run through whatever and you will get through it with two sets of iframes. Uh, this is a stupid spot, so let's see if I normally go here. So this is what you ideally want to go for. And uh, actually just going through blocks of where spring came up in uh, one tree where I forgot to take note of it. But basically sometimes you have to hit it twice and sometimes you get it in one go like I did before. And I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that uh, it's again the issue of where exactly you hit the spring. Like in this case, if you hit it from the top, then the spring pushes you, keeps pushing you high enough to get you through two blocks, but if you run it on the ground, then you get this. And in one tree, it's uh, if you jump over the enemy with the movement I did there, it, you should get it every time. Here, it's harder to get the jump on it like that without slowing down. Uh, at some point I started doing a jump into the spring like that, but it can backfire, as you saw. And uh, honestly, I'm not sure what exactly is the play here. <laughs> Just figure it out. Another thing you can do is uh, you can leap through that corner. Like... It's hard. There's a reason I'm not going for it. I think I recorded it at some point. Oh yeah, so that got me up there, but yeah, if you want to save all the frames, go for all the stupid stretch, this is what you should go for, but again, I'm not doing it, so I'm not qualified to tell you how that works exactly. Uh, we're gonna take a third damage here, and then you need to avoid that last guy, 
There's a, for some reason there's a health there right at the end of the stage, but that's just a red herring because you can just go to exit. Uh, first aid boss is unique. It's uh, based on this other small game that the same developer made. And you just wanna count to six, pick up the, uh, those drops, and then count to six, pick them up again and go. And yeah, that's about it. Those enemies respawn, which is why we do it in two batches instead of trying to kill all them at once, but uh, yeah. Count to six, collect, count to six, done. So here's an example of uh, another stage where you can just burger right away. You wanna jump there, and uh, yeah, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot. Oh, never mind, there's a... I'm gonna save here. So this is what I normally do here. Uh, the tricky part there is like a... So this is pretty easy to fall down here, if you are not very comfortable with the movement in the game. Uh, what I'm doing here is, is uh, I can get through... Uh, I get my burger reset, so I have one available here, then can get this section with only touching one spring, which slows you down for a movement, and uh, getting that specific one Sets me up for a high jump to get to a right position here to clip over. Uh, the easier way to do this would be like... Uh... Okay, hold on. So you could just jump here, which messes up the burger here. But if you settle on doing two jumps there, it's kind of free. Uh, here, if you manually jump right away as you touch it, you spend a, a little, slightly less time stuck to it. But again, I haven't timed this exactly, but I'm pretty sure that uh, one... A long jump is still faster than two slow ones. The easy way here is to just go through here, clip, which uh, pauses you for some frames. It's not much slower, but it's slightly slower than going high. And here, I guess I haven't explicitly mentioned it, but uh, a pretty common movement adjustment is uh, just doing a burger in the air and simply running off of it, which gives you a controlled way of, do of extending your jump a specific amount. So over here it lets you collect the bags and land on those blocks and go easily from there. And that's something that uh, you can try to work into your movement if you're trying to make some certain sequence work out. It's an easy way to add a consistent adjustment. Uh, here. So yeah, Road 2 is puzzle world and uh, there's gonna be a lot of these clips as we Bypass all of them, all the boss puzzles in the game mostly. And depending on the ge level geometry near the top of the screen, these clips can be either very easy or very hard or something in between. So this is a, should be an easy one. You can see that the ceiling here doesn't quite extend to the uh, top, so there's a lot of leeway here to get through. And these arrows don't either. I'm not sure exactly if it matters at this point, but. Yeah, the wall is the big part there. Uh, here is the, again, those arrows don't go. There's only like the half a tile there, so it's pretty easy to go here. And again here. And I fail it as I call it easy. Uh, uh, slightly easier here is you just uh, clip through here and get to the same point. And again, that's slightly slower, but more consistent. And whatever you do, you just jump out of there. And here's the next part. So I'm gonna save it a little bit too late. Because normally you bonk to the block that the arrow block destroys here. Which costs you again some frames and then you can clip through here and go. You can save some frames by clipping over here. Which, uh, again, I'm not doing myself. I don't recommend it. It's gonna cost you a bunch of time if you fail it, but it's slightly faster if you do want to go for it. Uh, here's another tight spot. You want to avoid touching this block, but land on this platform, so you can go here. And uh, one option is to just go deliberately low and use a burger there. Or you can make it still under there, just... Figure out what you're comfortable and consistent with. Uh, here's another tiny thing that I didn't get to mentioning before. You can run over two tile gaps like this. 
Okay. Stage mechanic catching up to me. But uh, you want to be careful jumping around them because even if like your perfectly horizontal movement gets you over, if you have jumped if you have jumped before and are on a downward trajectory there, you can very very easily fall through. So again, be careful with your jumps in sections like that. Uh, hold on. So here's a one back and forth section. You can make this with the two minimal jumps and then go back, uh, ideally. And uh, what the tool assisted run does is you would want to scale over this wall, but it's stupidly hard for several reasons. That's uh, one of the more difficult clips, since uh, both the blocks there are fully up to the ceiling and the uh, uh, force field extends lower, but uh, hey, if you want something to lab, that's an, that's an opportunity to save frames. Normally we use the door which gets you over there and continue from there and... Uh, yeah. So I messed up my moment there, but I don't think there's anything too interesting in the rest of the stage here. Uh, my movement in the end was a bit sloppy, I should have jumped earlier and... Uh, yeah, but I, I think the only thing that I failed there was grabbing some money. You can check out. I'm gonna do that over. So here's one of the more difficult stages in the run. Uh, here's the first option. You can either burger there or use the spring and then... Here it makes a tiny difference whether you go over here or just fall down. I think with perfect movement you can do this without slowing down, but I just... Like tool assistant run does it. I tried to replicate it and I experience just kind of failed. But uh, yeah, falling down there loses almost no time, so it's kind of choose whichever. Uh, this guy skipping the ladder is faster. Over there, I think, believe ideally you would not touch the block, you would just uh, burger through, but uh, it's really easy to die that way. It's much more consistent if you land on the block and then burger from there. I kind of messed up the fire guy cycle there. Normally it's always in a specific position if you have consistent movement up to this point. So right here, the ideal way is to just uh, jump over it, but oh, I thought I made a save state there. But well, okay, so I messed it up. I got hit there, which usually happens. If you have taken, if you took damage from the, the fire guy there, you can grab that health there. But if you do, then you, you're gonna jump from further back and you're almost certainly going to hit that guy. So basically, it just guarantees that you have three health going through here, which is enough. Uh, here's another guy that sometimes hits you, the second one of those bouncing guys sometimes does a low jump and you run into him, but uh, I've gone back and forth a bit with the routing of the first part of the stage, but uh, you ideally you would have two health here, but one is fine. And uh, Okay, so here normally you go through these doors a couple of times, but uh, we're gonna skip through here and go enter there. And you want to be very careful with where you land when running up top of these stairs. So another thing I didn't mention before, but this game has a very aggressive, like a catch, or what should I call it? Uh, when you jump across this ledge, it will grab you on top of it. So anytime you uh, jump over those, you want to be sure to really clear them with space to spare. If you jump close to them, then you might just get stuck there. Or what I just got might happen. I think that only happens when running left. I have only seen it happen in this screen, but sometimes you just... Uh, I can't recreate it at will. Okay, there you saw it. Like, instead of getting stuck in one of these steps, you just keep running and overshoot the door. So be careful here to land specifically here. If you have health here, you just uh, jump onto the teleport, then jump back there and go like that. If you're at one health, then you want to use one of those uh, landing burgers there, like 
don't jump off of it, just place one on the way down and then run off of it. Which uh, lands you on top of the ladder, which you climb down and avoid that bomb guy there. Uh, I recommend always stopping here. It's super easy to miss this jump here and run down. So, whatever. Optimize all the frames if you want, but I recommend being super safe there. Uh, here's the first difficult clip in the run. So you want to first jump here, which uh, lets your burger expire by the time you get to this point. If you're going to do like a intuitive movement here, then by the time you're jumping here, you might be in the middle of the burger explosion, which prevents you from doing what I just did. But uh, yeah, I'm getting it pretty consistently now. But uh, this is much harder than all the previous ones. And uh, I don't have a super, super consistent cue for it. It's kind of a thing that you need to just get a feel for. Uh, one thing that you need to be conscious of is that uh, there's a pretty long delay in spawning the burger. Like uh, if I smash A and B at the same time, you can see that I'm getting the burger pretty far off the ground. And uh, for the second thing, it, you might intuitively think that you're just uh, placing the burger like at the last possible moment and having it like push you through the wall. But uh, what really goes on is going on with the successful clip there is you place the burger earlier than that and you get an almost full run on it, which lets you get extra speed and that extra speed is the thing that gets you through. Okay, now this is more like it. So this uh, clip doesn't save a whole lot of time. The intended strat here is uh, to pick up this key and go back at this key and go through here. But it's kind of a safe place to first incorporate this and get used to it. Like, uh, if you approach it like this... Okay, hold on, let me get my movement straight. And then you fail this, then you lost almost no time compared to just going for it. If I remember correctly, it's... Uh, I think if you like uh, keep forcing it, then getting it on third, I think, breaks even with the intended strat. And uh, beyond that, you're losing time. But uh, yeah, I, I guess just, that just about covers it. Then here, just uh, hold right and run on this burger there. You wanna uh, run for it for a tiny bit instead of jumping immediately so that you clear that. Ladder for a tiny movement optimization, getting to fall there without losing your momentum on the way. Uh, then the tips challenge level. This is uh, one of the more interesting ones to route, but yeah, you can think about routing, try to beat my mine if you want to. But uh, basically, there are what 27 chips in the stage, and you need to collect 25 of them. Oh god, I forgot to make a save state in the beginning of the stage. Okay, and we're back. So, what I was saying, you are allowed to miss two, and uh, here's four there. You can't skip all of them, so you kind of want to get all of them. Uh, you need to use a burger to reach a spring, and then you want to bonk here to get you back on the ground. And this is the first double burger in the run. So, ideally, here you want to do that. So, you do a regular burger instead of the platform one, and then you catch up to it and jump on top, top of it. And then critically, before it explodes, you need to place your second burger, with which you will jump onto that chip there. This isn't a huge time save, so alternatively you just land there and then grab that. It saves you just jumping back and forth, and it's pretty tricky to, to do, so you may want to avoid it for a while. But uh, Anyway, that's the thing. So, let me see if I can... Also getting these in one swoop is deceptively hard. So that chip there is the one that we're gonna skip. Uh, if you keep your movement going, you don't need to pick this health, but you're gonna end the stage with one, but, and it's a very fast backup. Uh, then I'm gonna take a route there, here. So, 
you want to land there, then ride a burger, which will just barely grab that chip. And then you get through here. And here you can't do platform burgers. Pressing down drops the key. It's uh, super annoying and it's actually fixed in the game. But uh, in the if you download a code base for this, the game is open source. But uh, there's never been a release that would fix it because uh, the game is just declared complete and won't receive updates until something major comes up. But uh, yeah, so you need to get through this with regular jumps like that. And uh, if you fall, then yeah, you're gonna lose a lot of time. It's uh, it's tricky, but I don't really have anything interesting to say about it that isn't just straightforward, so you'll probably want to learn it. Uh, there, I just did a little buffer strat, do a full jump, small jump, and then a full jump on the ground to time falling off of that button uh, precisely. Uh, then here... Okay, let me just turn this from the top again. So this is the best I can do for movement there. I think it's ideal. Uh, here's the first wall clip. I should take a safe state there and pause for a bit. So what's going on here is uh, the game's wall ejection mechanism uh, works so that it uh, goes through different uh, direct possible directions to eject you in a certain order. So if you want to clip left, it's super easy. It happens almost by itself in narrower walls. This one is harder, it's uh, pretty tight, it's two thousand wide. And if you're just winging it, it's actually pretty hard. I would probably not be able to, like, I would not be able to free form it consistently, but this is such a tight movement that uh, I just have a muscle memory for a button sequence. So basically here you... Oh god, I forgot to take a save state there. And yeah, I need to take a moment to think about which buttons I'm pressing here, because, yeah, muscle memory. So yeah, hold down right, down left and B at the same time, then after a tiny delay, jump. And it should give you that moment to go through there. And uh, if you just replicate the same button sequence, it's not super hard. But uh, if you don't get it, then you. It, it's actually pretty tight. This one's easier. You just just do it. Uh, two seven. So here's a tree bit in the beginning where health might matter. If you get. Uh, we're gonna need to do another double burger jump there that I showed you in the beginning of the chips challenge level and we need to do a clip on the second jump from there. Uh, let's go. So this one stage where you want to memorize holding down right and be in the beginning lets you grab those three bags. Uh, here you can bonk into this wall and then continue immediately to avoid this bomb there. But uh, yeah, if you're comfortable and don't think you're gonna run out of health, then you can just take the damage from run through. Uh, shit. So here's the critical part. Uh, for one thing, you need to watch out for the ladder. You don't want to be. You can't be holding down as you're going through them. And then there's the enemy here, unless you kill it, which will keep damaging you. So what you want to do here is uh, around this ladder. Do the jump on the top of the regular burger, don't touch down, and then quickly enough before the burger hits the wall, jump through. I believe the fastest way here is to grab the key and then go through here, but uh, if you miss the key and uh, are otherwise on top of things, then just for the backup you can just keep going, go through the bottom and not go back for the key again. If you get through here with one health, it should be fine. You can get another one here, and then you should only take one more damage here. You might get hit by those guys, but uh, wait, actually these are the guys. Yeah, I, I don't know, I was confused. You should, you should be able to avoid these ones. Come on. And then run through these and finish the stage. Uh, stage 2 boss, this is uh, 
more typical boss. This is what most of them are going to be like. So one concept that comes up here, will be more relevant later, is that uh, the boss's movement starts as you enter the stage. But uh, his attacks, which in this case is throwing the blocks, are on a global cycle. So depending on how those align, you may or may not get this stage spot. But uh, you should always try for it in the beginning. If you get it, it's free. If you take some damage, then you just need to, at some point, run out of here for a moment and hang here. It's not a difficult fight in any fight anyway. You only take damage from the blocks and you can grab this health if you need to. Then something that I forgot to mention in the first world is that the, the transition after the boss kill happens at, at a specific delay and uh, just like the door transitions you keep your momentum. So if you're really on the ball you could uh, do the first jump early here. And it doesn't make a big difference in this case or again in the first world it's, the jump is pretty easy, so you can go for it. Here, if you do get it, you're gonna bonk into this wall, and it's super hard to make this smoothly. But uh, it's gonna be more relevant in a couple of boss fights later on. Uh, then we're getting to the Frozen Volcano. Here, you're gonna drop your burger, and you need to hold Select. It uh, looks really awkward in my runs, because I'm on, on an NES pad, and it's kinda hard to get all the inputs together, and it's only relevant in two spots in the run, so it's not also not big enough to really care about. If you're playing on an emulator and have a select on a shoulder button or something, you can kind of cheat here and maybe save some frames. But uh, however you get your movement here, grab the ice blocks there, we're gonna need them later on in this world, and... Uh... Okay, here, another thing that's uh, gonna be coming up a lot. So, with Burger... Yeah, they explode, you get one per jump. Uh, with the ice blocks, they just hang on. They keep running and then when they stop somewhere, it takes a brief moment and then they disappear. And you get a new one as soon as the previous ones are all off screen. So if you're over a pit like this, you can keep jumping. But if you need to place blocks on top of a solid ground, then you need to figure out a way to kind of delay your next one for long enough that can make. So in this case, uh, when you land here, you wanna keep running, hit that minecart, and then continue from there. And uh, yeah. Then the second and third stages, you need to extend your first jump because uh, when you start the stage and hold B, you will always like automatically drop that block there. And yeah, you can't even throw it off screen. If you ha were using double tap to run, which I do not recommend, but in theory you could, then you would avoid this, but since we're dropping the block here, we're gonna jump on that minecart and then take the jump all the way, and uh, that way get enough time. There are other ways you could play this, you can mess up, try different things, but uh, this is what I had settled on. It's not super tight, but you, if you just jump out, then you're gonna just fall down and die. And yeah, not much in the rest of the stage. Here, same deal. You can either jump all the way to the top or you can do a small hop. Two small hops. Uh, okay, here's a key spot. So you could just run. Well, actually I can because I got the low drop. If you got the high ceiling position, you can drop there and go from there. But uh, if you get the low one, then you fall down here, which gets all kind of awkward. So what I do here, to make it consistent, is I do a hop here and land on the second one and then go from there. Another thing that can happen there is that uh, you see the water there? So if you go off screen to the top, then it like the game code somewhere does some kind of a wraparound, so getting off screen here, right here specifically. Uh, let me try to make it happen. I'm... Damn it. <laughs> okay, this used to happen to me all the time. Okay, so this is what you want to avoid with the specific moment here. Right now, when I did the jump early, I am above the screen in the spot before the water. 
and the being off screen like that puts like the game treats me as if I'm in it and this slows down the movement and yeah. So that's part of the reason why I'm doing it this way. This lets you me avoid getting on top of the screen there. And uh, here the second ceiling has the same issue as the first one. That uh, if you got the low ceiling position, then you uh, bonk into this platform and fall down. This is one of the spots where I have somehow got my movement consistent so that I don't need to worry about it, but uh, you might sometimes fall down and so be, be ready for it. And uh, yeah, ideally you go over here, but the key is right there, so if you mess up and land there, it's probably faster to just grab it and go from there. Uh, 3, 4... I think there's a lot... You're gonna spend a lot of time over the ceiling here. I'm gonna jump here. And this again. I recommend kind of fixing your eyes at uh, the middle spot of the screen, because uh, Nova is going to be in the middle of the screen all the time, so... Uh, if you know... If you can keep track of that position, it shouldn't be too hard to make these jumps, but... Yeah, if you fall down, it's uh, pretty straightforward from there. You might want to have gra grab a health refill somewhere in there. Might need to, but uh, otherwise it's very straightforward. Uh, this is going to be the last stage before a shopping trip. So the number that, that you are aiming for are 365 minimum or 400 for the back of burger. So you want to keep track of your uh, money count during this stage. But now I get the hundreds wrong, it's uh, 465 or 500. And uh, here you need a block to get up there. I recommend just writing one in the beginning. Actually, something I started doing is uh, intentionally bonking this block and going from there, but uh, that's kind of just being cute for not much gain. So, pretty simple. You don't really lose much just writing one from the beginning, but like that can happen if you. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, uh, going forward, we didn't have a lot of these tight spots here. I recommend just landing here for safety. Uh, here's another one where you need to do the jump from the air. If you miss this jump, then you need to wait out that block before you can get over here. Uh, here's another left clip. You want the key from there. This key is irrelevant. You kind of just automatically pick it up by reflex, but uh, if you remember, so you can ignore it. It's, the intended route is to pick that key and then go back, which gets you the brown key and so on. Uh, here the tool assisted run saves a lot of time by going over here. I don't think I've ever managed to do that in real time. So in real time we do this accurate stress of just climbing down here. Uh, otherwise you can just pick this up for basically wherever, but uh, you don't want to end up in this situation. If you block both sides from the, of this, then you can't get up here. So you want to leave at least one side open for the last block, and then you want to... You can't get it like that, so you want to just... Uh, how do you do it? Yeah. So jump it at the same time as you grab it, and here if you time this perfectly, you can grab it on the way down without stopping. Uh, here, you're gonna need to place it down here, but uh, do not buffer the input. Like, uh, if you just hold down O2 early, what happens is you just fall through, because that's a... Uh, yeah, that's that kind of platform, there's the level collectible down there. So in, in case you didn't know those floating triangles, there's one in every stage and the game tracks which ones you picked up and getting all of them is required for 100% completion. Uh, I'm sorry, keep music here. Anyway, that you can keep going here. You can here's some gold you can pick up, and this is the final section. 
Normally you're gonna be on low health here, and uh, there's a lot of these, uh, what do you call this, coming down. And you can get through that with one health if you don't pause, but uh, if you need to start collecting these bags to make some gold target, then don't, then be careful of that. Also, if you jump here, it's pretty easy to fall through these gaps, so be super careful with that too. So basically, if you're falling short of 465, then yeah, try to do, do what you can, but uh, don't push it too hard for getting the backup. Then we go shopping here, gonna buy six balloons, one water bottle, two burgers, and then this is the minimum, and if you had the extra money, then you're gonna buy a third burger for backup. Press B to exit, exit, start. Uh, over here, this door doesn't really work you very much ahead. There's two ways you can do two ways you can do that. You can either do the clip here, which uh, I recommend. Then, for some reason, when I was running this early on, I prefer to instead uh, ride a block and use that to reach here. I can't remember why I did it anymore, but I probably had some reason, so if you are struggling with the clip, then you can try that too. If you mess up and lose your block, then the distance that this door warps you through, it puts you here. And uh, if you just run through, it's right here. So basically it's not worth uh, waiting for. If you miss the clip, then just keep going. Uh, so let's go back up here, since this is what we normally do here. Uh, be careful with the blocks here. You want to drop two here and then jump over here. If you're careless, then you might land one block there, which leaves you unable to use one for this wall, and you're gonna bonk there. So, not a huge deal, but saving all the frames and such. Here, just fall down and hold right, and uh, it will. state somewhere useful. Again, I messed it up, so just use the spring if you mess that up. You could, if you uh, did a perfect run up there, get through this with the five balloons, but there's really no pressing reason to push it. Just fall down, hold right. The sixth one will drop here, at which point you need to switch to ice blocks. And then, yeah. Obviously you would want to run to the top here, just uh, if you mess up, then use Icebox to climb up. 3-7. Uh, the current world record actually dies twice here in the beginning. I keep running into this bit here. What I used to do was um, like use a coyote time at the end of this platform to jump here. But later I realized you can just run through this ice block and it's much faster, so do that instead. Uh, yeah, this jump is pretty tricky. Lost track of what I was doing. So you kind of just uh, want to approach it and then place a block here. If you try to jump straight into it, here, you can, like, basically that happens. So this basically inserts it. But you sometimes get this block pushed through. If your block lands here, then you, like, uh, okay, let's see if I can replicate this. Like, this is the fast way to do it without stopping, but the first ice block there is impossible to do if your block came through the door with you. Okay, come on. Okay, that's an accurate save state. there so that's yeah so for safety you might want to always stop on this for a moment and then jump here but uh, once you're comfortable enough with the movement and so on that you can react to whether you got this or not then feel free to just play it fast if you can uh, if you die here you can even grab the title from that guy I'm not super knowledgeable about where the backup items are 
I basically just remember a few spots that are common to die in, and yeah, a few words about that. If you are not sure where you can get items, uh, then you should probably just exit the stage and uh, go shop early. Like, if that happens early game, later on you're, you'll just use the burger and then fix it later if you need to. But uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, coming up here... The safe way to do this is to just run through the wall and stop right there like that. Uh, slightly faster one is to drop through the middle hole there. It's uh, dropping through a single tile gap is always a bit awkward, so do whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, where did I save? Oh my god, that's such a... <laughs> did I really manage to save there? Okay, fine. Let's... Let's get a better stage stage somewhere. Okay, what was I even trying to do here? Okay, let's pause here. So, here's the movement through here. Uh, I think that's all you need to know. I basically figured only recently that that's grabbing the key and going back is faster than clipping through here, which is like intuitively a skip. But the issue with skipping through is that uh, you need a platform to jump there. You can get from there, which is what the... Uh, actually... Yeah, I think the earlier version of the Twilight Citron did it, but then later it's what to just going over here. It's possible, but it's stupidly hard, so I don't go for it. Uh, what I used to do here before is that uh, if you pause briefly, land on these, then it lets you run through these without placing a block there, because uh, when I used to do this, then ideally if you fail it, you want the ice block to disappear instead of landing there, but... Anyway, that's probably moot, uh, because uh, you just want to do this. Alternatively, you could run over here, which I think is lower. I'm not exactly sure. It's very close, but also going through the door despawns your ice block, so that makes sure that you don't have one lying on the screen screwing you up. Uh, second stage boss. Yeah, not much to say about this. I have my own movement here, but uh, really you just keep him in iframes and nothing else matters. Except that when you land the last hit, you want to be running right, so... Otherwise, if you get teleported here with no momentum, you'll drop here and you need to bonk into the snowman and jump over. But if you have full running speed, then you just run over and that's it. Uh, okay, here we're gonna use a dinner blaster. Uh, this isn't strictly needed. Uh, for a long time the strat here was to pause here and get it from here, but uh, there's a little bug in this game. So, this game, if you use an item and die, the game refunds it. It's nice like that, so you don't lose them until you actually use them, you can try again. But there's a little bug that, that triggers that behavior sometimes, even if it shouldn't, which I believe has to do with the, uh, going through doors. Uh, that's what I used to say in run commentary, but at some point I found that I, like I'm pretty sure I sometimes lost the items, even despite going through them, so maybe it's the only first time or something, but in any case, no matter what the behavior is, it happens consistently in runs, so uh, when you use the burger here, as I did, then you will get it back if nothing unusual happens. Uh, oh yeah, I was supposed to show this. So here, if you stayed on ice blocks, you can do this a bit more in a bit more consistent way. You can just uh, fall down here and then climb up, but that doesn't work with burgers, obviously. So here you need to pause for a tiny bit to land here, and then... So right here, I'm gonna avoid those. You don't need to then do the minimum jump there, minimum jump there. And 
and uh Yeah, I don't think there's anything too in-depth to say about that movement. It's just some tricky jumps there. Uh, one of the, another one of the more tricky stages in the run. Uh, so for this clip, this is kind of a muscle memory thing again. You wanna... how does this work again? Yeah, you know how you know how this works. Uh, you do it on muscle memory, and then when you start thinking about it consciously, you lose it immediately. Uh, what exactly am I pressing there? So if you get stuck in this corner, it's pretty hard to get out. And uh, the right movement sequence for that is uh, you roll, you press first B. And then, then immediately afterwards, A. I think just about the simultaneous press works too. But, uh, yeah, first B, then slightly after A is uh, more consistent. And uh, yeah, that's what I do here too. First, first B, then almost immediately afterwards, A. And uh, yeah, this is background tiles, which we didn't realize at first, but let's just click through here and uh, skip. Uh, Pretty slow fan puzzle there. Uh, here, the fastest way to through here would be to drop through this gap and go through here, but that's super scary and you know, error prone. So, okay, I died during the easy way because I was blocking, but uh, yeah, this is much more predictable and I recommend going through here, but that's an option for you. Uh, And another spot here, roll B into A. Kinda tight if you don't know what you're doing, but it's just uh, gonna get used to the button sequence. Uh, then the wide open underground stage. So the fast way to do this is to, like this, you run a bit there to get under the spring, then clip through to the door from the bottom. The intended route in the stage is to like, uh, Pick an item which lets you access another item, which lets you access fireballs, which you would then use to burn your way through this ice here. And uh, if that clip seems feels hard to you, you can just do that. This is the old strat, which only uses a few seconds. You use burgers to blow through these instead of the fireballs, and since you're on burgers here anyway, in that case you would aim for the spring instead of avoiding it. Uh, the burger explosion isn't 100% consistent, so to make it a little bit better, you can shoot it a tiny bit lower here. But uh, for the next one, you just need to fire them at the wall here until it works. But yeah, those are the two strats for this stage. Uh, stage 4-4. Four, four. The intended route here is the ladder here, but since uh, you uh, this spot is marked as something you can go through, then you can exit through this corner too. And uh, yeah, use a burger here to reach the spring and climb here. There are some health refills here if you need them. Pick up the key there. Jump through here. Uh, this is another spot where I su suggest slowing down. It's very easy to accidentally run into the bomb there, but you just jump through. I think this is the dumbest clip. And that, that's how you die if you're careless, so... Ideally you would jump through there and uh, hit this one tile gap there, but that's pretty tight, so just... Don't expect it, you can just run all the way to the end. And, uh... and then the dumbest stage in the run. Uh, for a moment here I like to do a normal burger then catch up to it which seems to get me here pretty consistently. But yeah, these lasers are this stage's gimmick. And at full running speed and fast setting, they don't stop you consistently. But also, there's no consistent setup to going through them either. Like you can maximize your chances by maximizing your speed as you approach them, but it's down to luck anyway. So sometimes you just get screwed here. It's uh. It's super rare to get screwed so bad that you would take too much damage and 
die, but you want to be careful with your health here and be mindful that sometimes this stuff just fails. Anyway, grab the key here. So ideally, you go over here. And this is another annoying spot. If you fail this clip, you need to be really careful to not open that door. But yeah, ideally, we do these clips. If you want to avoid them, you go through, then open this door here. I'm gonna show a bit later what to do as the alternative. Pick up the health here always, that's routine. It's not necessarily needed, but you want to make sure you're in full health here. Uh, this laser pins you into this corner, so if you try to jump right away, you're very likely get hit by the laser still there. And uh, it will ruin your woman and un unexpectedly keep you there, which obviously isn't happening now that I, I'm talking about it. But if you want to be consistent here, then spend the time. Stay still for a tiny bit, wait for all the lasers to disappear. They'll stop coming when you despawn the generator on the left. And then once you're clear, then jump off. And uh, the fastest here, if you manage to keep your key, is... Uh, uh, Drop down here, jump there, and then you use a burger to get over here. If you used the key before, don't have it, then you need to go down here, get through the laser there, and ride some burgers and get up from here. Uh, preferably jump over that laser there. Uh, this is the last hard test here. I recommend being super careful with when you approach this. It's very easy to get knocked back there and just fall down and die. Be super wary of when you attempt it and always be mindful that like, ha you need to have a plan for how you re recover it if you don't get through. Then getting over here, touching those fans is a pretty big time loss. Like uh, if you try to drop here and get caught and drops you down and it's uh, super annoying. So imagine that there's a laser there and just jump over and uh, yeah, that's that stage. Uh, here we swap to ice blocks. No, again, be careful here. If you get the low ceiling exit, you will fail to reach this platform and you need to recover it. Be ready for in case that happens so you don't just die. Here... Uh, I guess I norm wouldn't normally land here, but uh, try to make put your aim to put your last ice block into this lava there. So then it despawns and you can do another one here. If you drop your last one in the lava, then you're gonna bonk here and lose a bit of time. It's not a big deal, just a moment optimization. Uh, so last two worlds have two boss fights. Uh, this one's a bit longer, and I have this buffer strat here. This isn't strictly necessary to do it this way, I just found it work well enough. I get that get to avoid damage and get consistent damage in, so you can try this or come up with something on your own. And then at this point we change and have this guy here. And uh, ideally you want to do a tiny hop before the stage ends, or before you board transition and get through that gap, like uh, between here. If you do a higher jump, then you end up on these platforms. If you don't jump at all, then you bonk into that block from the side and lose a tiny bit of time there. It's not a big difference either way. And uh, every so often I lose my timing there and start, my shots start whiffing. And then I have no idea what's wrong because I don't think about it consciously. But uh, I believe the most consistent way is that I press B and D pad down at like two or three blocks from the bottom and try to maintain that same timing. It's a uh, later works, but uh, like, like it's easy until it's not, it's just weird. Uh, here's a different boss fight. This one doesn't have long iframes. And what you want to do is you want to stay on this platform and wail down on him. His movement in the beginning is kind of weird. It's a... Uh, he can stay at a different distance from you, and there are kind of like sweet spots there. What you want to avoid is having him... Uh, uh, let's see if I can get a bad position here. Uh, 
So what can happen is that uh, he comes really close to you and your shots start going over and you need to find a spot where you can avoid that. And uh, it's possible to get three spots here. But uh, yeah, there are all kinds of fancy details you can do there, but uh, it's uh, something like this anyway. If I go for yeah, so right there, I took such positions that for the second jump, he was too close to me and I couldn't really fire at him, and uh, that's what you want to avoid. And uh, yeah, I think at some point I managed to kill him in two jumps, but um, usually you will have two shots left at that point, and uh, I guess, yeah. Okay, moving on. Final world. 5-1, uh, start the stage by holding down and B. You need uh, that extra one block to reach this platform here. And uh, from here and you just jump. Uh, here you could go over. I think it's in theory a tiny bit faster. Uh, here's another spot where... I've got a couple of these spots in the last final world. Where you have these kind of ste steps here. And again you want to avoid like jumping too close to them so that... Uh, one of those ledges doesn't grab you and make you bonk into these. So you want to aim for these... Uh, longer, steady platforms. And jump off of those. Uh, so the straightforward strat here is to stay on icebox for a bit, but uh, the intended route here is a bit slow. Uh, the fast way is to use burgers here and go for a clip here. And at this point you can get by with either ice blocks or burgers, it shouldn't make a, much of a difference either way. Uh, hold on, I don't wanna hurt. Let me do over this stage. So reaching that ceiling is pretty tight, you need to hit the apex of your jump both times. The source of here, over here, and uh, yeah, mostly a straightforward stage. Uh, what am I supposed to do here? 5-3 is another straightforward one. Straightforward one. Here's again, you might get a low or high ceiling drop. I'm getting a low one here, which means I bonk here. If you know we'd be super fast, then as you're falling, you can fall right before the ground use a burger. And then if you put it too early or did get a high ceiling drop, then you just fly over to the door and fall into the pit there like an idiot. So I do not recommend going for that. It's super easy to die there. If you get a high drop, then you just immediately land on the door there. Uh, in the water area, you try to run across the platforms, or if you can't, then use burgers to speed up your movement for a bit. Uh, if you're on ice blocks here, do not hold B in the beginning of the stage, so you don't drop an ice block here and have it blocked. Instead, jump here, then go from there. And yeah, on burgers, it doesn't matter since it just explodes there. Uh, here, if you hit this um, spring, it will take you here just fine. Usually you should be going a bit further here, in which case you need to jump through there. On burgers, you need to ride almost the full length of the shot here to make it through. With ice, bo ice box, it's easy. Then if you didn't earlier, menu in the burgers before the wall to go through. Uh, over here, I believe, going Below is slightly faster, but uh, this is an option too. Uh, oh wait, I took a bunch of damage here for no reason. Health shouldn't be an issue at this point, normally. Also here's a full health refill. Uh, okay, here's another place with options. The fast threat is to go over here, like this. 
so the so that's a lot faster than doing it in another way but uh, the danger is if you keep failing it these bombs are gonna blow off the ground there and then it gets super awkward so you need to be pretty confident with your click to go for it the other way is that uh, you want to stand here on the fourth block by your burger which drops you the right position which triggers those blocks and then you go through here but uh yeah so whatever you wait you get through will drop here and trigger that block uh you can clip through here it's like almost a double frame perfect so don't count on it you can try it in, with save states to see if you can make it but uh, it's stupidly tight so don't rely on it here you have a couple of options, so this is the faster route, which I do these days. I used to have more trouble with these missiles blowing up the ground here and having me die here, like this. I think that's an issue with having consistent movement, I haven't seen it for a while, and I think it's just, if you're not slow it won't happen, but I'm not entirely sure. It could be just that it happens if you get super unlucky with the, those missile timings or something. So the safe hey, way here is to go here and that's pretty much guaranteed well not, not pretty much that simply guarantees here that's also uh, this position which is kind of a compromise I'm not sure how that works out but yeah pick one of those uh, five five has this gimmick of running on top of waiting for these running on top of these not much here speed run wise. You can optimize that drop there. If you wanna go over here. Then here's an another one where it, like it's super easy to have. Okay, I should have been gone under this one. This thing here this is gonna be awkward now. But what do I do normally here? So normally I run there, then ride the burger, then jump there. But you really, really do not want this one arrow block to grab you. Let's see if I can do this like that. So be careful to either intentionally land on it or clear it by enough that you're safe. Uh, this is movement here is super awkward. From ground you can only reach these lower blocks, from which you can't reach to exit. And then if you have to either like jump there. Or if you use, or you can use a burger to reach one of them, but that gives you horizontal movement, which throws you off, and it's awkward. But yeah, do something. Here's a ping, the panda fight. So basically, if you fight this normally, this is a nightmare. So what we do here is we use the water bottles here to shoot him from the bottom here. There are three ways the fight can go. So let's see what happens here. You can see I'm doing this kind of four point cycle, which uh, so for optimal shot timings, you hit him like at the end of the cycle, then close to the middle on that side. Okay, hold on, let me get this again. So end of the cycle, close to the middle on that side, end of the cycle on the another side, close to the middle, and you keep alternating this until he dies. So this is how it goes ideally. Uh, sometimes he, you'll have him running very close to the end. Uh, so this is something that I didn't get to earlier, but uh, you have these two different cycles that I mentioned in the second stage boss, where the attack cycles and the movement cycles align in a certain way. And by pausing the global timer for attacks, or in this case his jumps, still runs, but his movement is obviously frozen, so with pauses you can alter the timings here. So in effect, if you pause for a tiny bit, it makes his jump come that much earlier. And this is uh, most relevant here and in the final boss uh, in a moment. But uh, let's see if I can... So here you can see that the boss jumps right from the edge. So if you were paying close attention before, 
you might have noticed that uh, he keeps speeding up, which you can see as him covering a wider ground on the, on there. So if he starts from the side, then you want to keep just hitting him at the end, end of his walk cycle every time, so that when he's, the area he covers extends, it will always be to the right, and you'll avoid from having him walk off. And obviously you lose a tiny bit of time to the downtime between the shots, but it's safe and consistent. And the third thing that can happen is that if you time your pause unfortunately, he will walk down. And uh, if you're lucky, if he just barely walked down, then you, this is what you ideally want to happen, except for the part where I made him jump the wrong direction, that he'll just place a second row of blocks and then you can pretend nothing bad happened. And uh, if he does shoot on the ground, then, then you're screwed. Just I don't, I don't know how to make it consistent from there, then you just struggle. And you might want to practice that a few times so that you have some idea what to do if it comes up. But also, here's the snowman again, so run as you're falling off. Uh, so here... Go back to the burgers, fly over the spring, and... Uh, yeah. So this is the final stage of the run. One of the longest. There are a couple of awkward spots here. So the first screen is super easy. Then we get to the puzzle word screen, which is... Uh, here, and this is the awkward spot, so... Here you want to keep moving so that you don't have these tornadoes active as you enter this spot. The difficult way of doing it is uh, like jumping on those. What you want to do is uh, land here. And this is super awkward, you might realistically fall from it. If you fall down here, you can save it with a burger from there. I really recommend getting this save spot, save spot for safety so that you can continue here if you do fall down, but uh, I'm nothing super deep about that. Here you want to be on at least 3 health. 3 is okay, shouldn't make a difference compared to full, but if you are on 2, then pick up this health here before going forward. Uh, here, the timing isn't tight. If you get Once you get, get grabbed by the force field, you can click through any time, so don't try too hard on this timing, just be safe. Uh, you can make that. It's uh, I can't do that consistently, but uh, that's what you want to aim for. If you hit one of the springs, then just you take the time loss and fall down again. Uh, here you need five of these keys in the beginning. You should have plenty, but uh, if you miss the ones in the beginning, then just... Uh, yeah, it shouldn't be an issue, but you need to... If you do miss them, then it's a huge disaster. Uh, here, the ideal way to get through here is to place a burger there to take you to the door for a tiny bit of frame save. Uh, you... In the final area, go over here, get to this health where you get full, and then just run through. Don't use a burger here, just do a full jump there, again to avoid monking. Uh, usually if you take this spring, you bonk there, unless you get a perfect hit there, so... Where did I say it before? Uh, let's try to get my movement correct here. So that's how I usually bypass that. Then the final boss. Uh, I got a super early attack now, so you really can't realistically hit it. And, uh... Or well, I guess you can hit one. And, uh, if you wanna... Like, again, if you pause here, it will make that attack earlier, which means that you lose a cycle. And, uh, here I'm gonna miss that. Miss that. Okay, yeah, so that doesn't work out. I was going to say that don't miss a cycle, but yeah, you're gonna miss enough shots there. But, uh... So now when I 
I took that a little bit slow so that I don't transition into just getting a super late cycle because this boss is an asshole and sometimes dodges your reflections with the, his uh, face transition. You can get doubles here. And then, yeah. Your, if you hit everything, you kill him at the end of the bomb cycle. So you have basically eight shots of stack before you start losing a lot of time. And uh, burgers aren't inherently faster or slower. It's just easier to hit the doubles. And uh, since uh, you're limited by the global cycle, unless you wrap over one timing, then it doesn't make a difference. Like here. Uh, what was I doing? So his phase transitions are on a timer, like stage timer, but the attacks are on a global timer, so... One theoretical test strat here is that if you pause correctly, you could get him like effectively spamming these projectiles here, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but basically... Pausing delays his attack cycle without altering his... movement cycles, so that's kind of the gist of it, and uh, unless you do a ton of it, you're gonna get four attack cycles on each phase cycle, oops, and uh, yeah. I'm trying to think if I had anything else to say, but yeah, I guess that's it. Please, please run speedrun over the squirrel. It's a good game. Peace out.